Okay, hello everyone, this is Mr. Rob Ronan here again, and today we're going over a breakdown for Sabito. Now, Sabito is a character who is quite simple, and his main strength is honestly just that he feels good. All of his buttons feel like they have really generous hitboxes, all of his swords seem to reach like to the maximum of the particles that are shown on the screen, where some swords really don't. Um, all of the hits that you get get really solid, nice feeling chunks of damage. He just feels like it overall. He just, every time you do something with Sabato, you're like, yeah, yeah, I just did that and that felt good. Um, <laughs> don't know if that's an actual strength that is useful in battle, but um, it does feel nice. And he's a, he's a well rounded, pretty good average character. So, with that said, let's just get into the basics of the breakdown. His regular attack string is exceptionally average, just a few hits and does average damage. His up attack string is also extremely average, you know, does less damage than the regular attack string, and then his down string does the most damage and then just slams on the ground. Almost exactly the same as the likes of water style Tanjiro and stuff. His aerial attacks um, are actually quite good in that they have a lot of hits done somehow. They don't have great hitboxes, honestly, you have to be pretty close to the ground, but luckily his aerial dash puts him down really quickly, so it can get them actually pretty consistently, because basically you can just do an instant dash into strikes and then you'll be able to get them, and then off of them you'll, you know, be able to get a combo. Oops. Um, but what's good about them is that they actually have really long hitboxes, so you can hit confirm them into stuff like this, which gives you really big damage. A really really simple combo <laughs> or you can just do like um, dash ins into normal combos and stuff his tilt attack on the ground is actually one of his big strengths um the thing itself the normal version seems pretty average like has below average range and doesn't do ridiculous damage or anything but where it does become useful is the charged version it's actually the fastest charge up armor attack in the game and what I mean by that is the red circle that appears around him, that appears a lot quicker than it would in a character, say, Makamo. I think hers is pretty average, but you see, she takes a lot longer to get into the charged version than Sabito does. So his is like, one Mississippi, and then, down, and then hers is like, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, but... So, big difference. And that makes for some really, really useful either resets or just, it's just a great armor attack. So whenever you're armoring, you could hold the thing down, and you get a lot more damage. You get big chunks of damage if you land an armor attack. Or, if the opponent is guarding, then you're just going to break their guard a lot. And it, there are some interesting resets you see people do where they um, cancel out of their attacks. And like, instead of accidentally finishing the... In, instead of finishing the combo... They act like they accidentally cancelled out of it, and they go for an armor attack, and then that catches people. It catches me a few times, I can tell you. And I can't do it very consistently myself, but basically you jump, sidestep, and then do an armor attack, and if you do it fast enough, it looks um, really strange and kind of unreactable. I'll try one more time. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> It's a really good armor attack and it charges up quickly, so if you do have the opponent blocking stuff like this, um, why is it? instead of going for a grab, which, you know, a grab is very good here, because there's so much stuff on the screen, you don't really get to see the grab get charged up, or you can charge up this, and then a second later, all of a sudden they're getting hit. Oops. His tilt attack in the air is pretty good. It actually has a good hitbox because he does that strike forwards. A lot of characters just hit like right below them. They have kind of all good hitbox. But Sabito actually hits in front of himself. So there's a little bit of a disjointed hitbox, which is really, really handy. It's not advantageous on block or anything. It just has a really nice hitbox and starts a red combo like normal. Oh, wait. I proved myself wrong. It starts a yellow combo. Now that is really amazing. I didn't even notice that when I was playing with him. Wow, okay. It starts a yellow combo, so not only does it have an awesome hitbox, it starts yellow combos, and you can just get full proper damage from it. Wow, nice. Same's not the same for this thing, right? No. <laughs> his grab is also really above average. He swings his knees so far forwards, and is decently fast, and does above, or maybe that's an average damage. 
but it has above average range for sure. Like that might be like even longer. No, you definitely can't get longer than Hinokami Tanjiro or Nezuko. But it's it's really really long and decent damage for a really long reaching, and it's not particularly slow for a long reaching one, which is really good because then you can get it off of a blocked waterfall and stuff like that. And it's just a really good grab, and it leaves you close to the opponent, so you can go straight in for your whatever press you like doing. Or, or. Hold up. You could go for this. And then as soon as they wake up, okay, you have to delay it a little bit, but then they get hit by that as they wake up and then I roll. Um, I think those are all of his normals. There's nothing too special to mention, except for the tilt attack, which we realized was really special. And the tilt attack on the ground is also really special. So both of his tilt attacks, very, very powerful. Good job, Sabito. Um, a quick note on his movement for the specials, as I've mentioned, his um, aerial sidestep moves him in a, a nice angle downwards where he can do like an instant dash into his regular attacks, um, which is very consistent to get. So if you're right beside the opponent and you push them away, you can like push them, jump sideways, and then dash towards them. And then if you can get a combo if they get hit by that. Because your dash is invincible for a bit, so it is likely that you are going to get a hit from it. Okay, and his dash in is pretty average, maybe even a bit slow, but that's about it. Okay, so now for his specials. The standing special is a waterfall basin, very similar to Tanjiro's, except he does this little up slash at the beginning, which is kind of annoying because it makes it take a lot longer than a regular waterfall. Or whatever. Wait, what is it called? Water basin. Waterfall basin. Um, so yeah, it just takes a little bit longer, but it does a little extra damage than Tanjiro's, I think. But uh, it's just a little annoying that he's kind of slow at it. Uh, and it's basically the exact same as most other waterfalls, you know. It leaves the opponent in a long slump. You can go for a grab or an armor attack. Or even a jumping normal if you feel like timing that, but that can be very difficult. I'm not even sure if I can do it consistently. Um, <laughs> maybe a tilt attack. Yeah, that's easier. But yeah, you've time to just go for anything, it has a long time. You can cancel into an ultimate or whatever, as long as it's a single hit, you can end your combo. And it does decent damage, it extends combos, blah 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 blah, it's a waterfall. And it's advantageous on block. And because it has so much visual noise, it's really good on block. Because you can just be pressing grab and then because all that water particles are still there, you can go for a grab, or as we said, you can go for that. And mess up your combo. Um, that's about it for the waterfall. It's practically the exact same in the air. It just does a little bit less damage because you don't get that, um, that first hit. But it can lead to really big damage if you manage to get this hit confirmed. 4,000 damage for two bars, 4,200, that's pretty damn good. Okay, now his tilt special is a really weird special move. Um, just He just dances around with his sword. In the air it has a hard knockdown, which is really good. Um, on the ground, it knocks the opponent back, but not in a way that you can really combo into anything. You can sometimes get, um, if you're close, you can get the first hit of your waterfall, but then the second one whiffs and it's just really awkward. Um, so it doesn't really combo into anything, except your ultimate. It might be one of the main ways you combo into your ultimate, but mainly it's just going to be used as ways of getting extra damage in your combos by, you know, stuff like this, off of the charged armor attack, and then you cancel into your waterfall before the last hit, and it just adds a little bit extra damage, and it doesn't scale as much as normal attacks. It's basically just a flurry of normal attacks, but it costs two meter. And, um, yeah, as I said, in the air it's just a little bit more useful, because it actually has a hard knockdown, so you can build some meter back before the opponent wakes up. Okay, now his guard special, it is a whirlpool. And, honestly, even though it, like, feels a lot cooler, because he doesn't, like, do the jump in the air and it lasts a lot longer and it has more of, like, a hit effect, it's not as good as regular water Tanjiro's, because regular Tanjiro, he, like, jumps forward and does it, Sabito does a little bit, but nowhere near as much as Tanjiro does. So a lot of the time, sometimes if you push back and the opponent stops attacking, 
or whatever, or they don't go far enough forwards, sometimes you can just do it and then you miss. Or if you think it's going to hit from over here and it just doesn't, it can be a little bit awkward and it can't combo off of the likes of this because of it, because it doesn't go far enough forwards, but it is a very damaging combo and uh, so if you are doing a very basic combo, you're still getting a lot of damage. Which is a key aspect of Sabito. He can do easy things, but do easy things really well. Like 3,700 for two bars for a super simple combo. That's good stuff. And obviously you can't do it in the air. So now that we've talked about all of his buttons and specials, let's just talk about combos and resets and his general game plan. So a bread and butter combo with Sabito, as I literally just showed, is a full attack string into your waterfall, into a full attack string, into your whirlpool. And this is a very, very easy combo to do in any kind of laggy online environment or whatever. Um, because any combo with a full attack string in it, it just becomes so easy to do online. Because you don't have to watch about how many hits you're doing. You can just mash the attack button and then when you see it's about to end, mash the special button. And then do the same thing over and over again. And if the opponent doesn't order quick recover, let's see how quickly they get up. Okay, they get up pretty quickly, way before I even start building meter. So it's not a very good way of building meter, but it is really good guaranteed easy damage. If you don't want to build meter, I do suggest you end in the waterfall basin. You do have to end a little bit earlier though, because that special move is kind of slow. Then you get to build back a bit of meter. Or you could do a, like a little bit of a different combo if you want to go like up into the air. Oh, whoops, didn't mean to do that special move. You want to end a longer combo and something like that to get a hard knockdown. Perhaps you've gotten a hit off of your um, aerial attacks and you have a combo where the opponent's in the air. And you end it like this. You get a nice hard knockdown and you can build some meter. So just make sure you're paying attention to that since you don't have too many opportunities to build meter. But luckily he does have a hard knockdown grab so that gives him a little bit of time there. Uh, what, 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 what other combos do you do with Sabito? Oh yeah, off of a red attack, since you're charging your red attack a lot, a really good combo to do off of it is just your tilt special into your neutral special into a grab, and that does a big chunk of damage. And obviously that grab can re be replaced with an ultimate, and obviously the big chunk of damage becomes even bigger. <laughs> Probably one of the most damaging ways he can combo into his ultimate. Um, off of a tilt attack in the air, because it's his dive kick and it starts a yellow combo, you're basically just going to treat it like a normal combo, just do a few hits into waterfall and then a, two hit, a few hits into your tornado. It'll just be a little bit less because you, you know, started the combo earlier. But it'll still be great damage for a dive kick. And obviously you still have the opportunity of ending in a hard knockdown if you'd like. If you want to add some extra damage in your combos, there are a few ways to do so. You can either do that by doing an armor attack in the middle of your combo after the waterfall. Um, if you're doing a basic bread and butter combo, it doesn't actually end up doing more, it does less. But in certain situations where maybe if you land a raw waterfall, or if you like just land an awkward combo that's a little bit different, a good way of adding more damage into it is by using your armor attack. Maybe you've gotten a, um, a parry and you're getting a long combo, that would be a good time to go for your armor attack. But in a regular BNB, it's not too worth it. Only in strange combos, and then you do this and you just get a little bit extra damage. Or if you have the time, you can go for a few of these hits and then go into your waterfall basin. And then go into your whirlpool, and that's just another way of adding some extra damage. Maybe if you want to do um, less of your attack string so it scales less, you could do something like this. And, oh, that was actually less damage for some reason. Yep, but uh, if you have the time and you can add that into your combos to do the full thing instead of having to cut it short like I did, that would make the damage be more. So if you have a longer combo from a parry or something, or if you're just trying to get more damage like we did with this, um, for this, this is a perfect time to use this special move. Now... Other than that, is there too much else to talk about combo-wise with Sabuto? If 
few are in boost. Obviously, um, since he has very simple combo routes, you can just do something super simple like this, and it'll just make your combos a little bit cheaper. It only costs one bar, it looks really cool, and it's 4,000 damage. And wow, that is a really long knockdown. Holy moly. Wait, how much meter would I build for that? So let me boost to then spend a bunch of meter. So if you're in boost mode, you can kind of go crazy with your meter, because it seems like he can build it really, really effectively with this hard knockdown. Yeah, holy moly, I can build nearly all of my meter back just from that one hard knockdown. So if you're in boost mode, just go crazy with the meter. Do a bunch of these, do a bunch of this, do a bunch of this. Into whirlpool and your opponent will just die. And obviously the same thing applies if you are in surge mode. Because, I mean, we all know how surge mode works now. You just get big chunks of damage for doing random special moves. Now if you want to combo into your ultimate, you can do something like this. Uh, oops, maybe the corner messes that up a little bit. Or obviously you also have the option of doing it after a waterfall basin at the very end of your combo. Like this, even though there's very little combo counter left, because that's a hard slump knockdown state. You can get an ultimate off of that super easily, so it's really, really easy to hit confirm. You don't have to time it at all. But as I said, the most damaging way to do your ultimate is off of something like this. But that is about it for Savito, I believe. He's got very simple combos thanks to his waterfall, and there's just a few extra ways he can add damage, either by doing this, or by adding in an armor attack, and just by using all three special moves in one combo, he gets really big chunks of damage really easily. Um, if we quickly talk about pressure, he's nothing too crazy about pressure. Like, he has a waterfall that's, you know, advantageous on block, and he has this really good, you know, dancing special move, so if the opponent tries to push you back, he, like, keeps doing these rushing in on them. So that's really good against people that like to push you away and run away. And if they do, like, try to push away and run away a lot, you can obviously dash in at any time during that, and maybe break their card like I did just then. And he can cancel in for a grab after the end of his attack stream. Or at the end of his... this thing. <laughs> his tilt special. Or, obviously, after his waterfall, he can go for a grab or an armored attack. It's a perfect opportunity to go for either of those. And, uh, yeah, now that's about it for Sabito. He's a very, very powerful, well-rounded character who gets lovely, damaging, big chunks of damage, and very simply. So if you understand how to play the game and understand the fundamentals, he's a really easy character to just get some awesome, awesome gameplay with, and it'll make you feel really good about yourself, because everything feels awesome. <laughs> so, yeah. That's Sabito. I hope you enjoyed this little breakdown. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! -bye.